This week marks the 150th anniversary of what many consider the end of the Civil War when Robert E. Lee surrendered. Now a remarkable and intimate look at that time in America's history and how it affected a very specific part of our area. CBS 2 Scott Rappaport has the story from Brooklyn. A century and a half ago, between 1861 and 1865, more than 30,000 men from Brooklyn left home to fight in the Civil War, leaving behind spouses, children, and loved ones. These are their stories. I could spend hours in here just reading everything. You're looking at two dozen letters and personal correspondence between those soldiers and those loved ones, part of an extraordinary exhibit here at the Brooklyn Historical Society. The writings providing a window into the souls of those affected during the war. They speak of love, longing, and death, the full spectrum of human emotion. They talk about their belief in the war they're fighting, and sometimes they talk about their disillusionment. In this letter, a soldier named Daniel Kelsey writes to his son, I have never experienced so grieving a loss as I had of your brother Samuel. In another, John Woodward writes to his girlfriend Annie, I have this duty and hope that I may do nothing that will make you ashamed to acknowledge me as your friend, Mr. J. Woodward. All of the letters, every one of them, are from people who were from Brooklyn. It is an intensely personal look into their lives at the time. Life during wartime. Displayed on the wall, a correspondence from Washington Roebling, the son of the man who designed the Brooklyn Bridge, written to his fiancée, Emily Warren. In it, he says, I have often wondered how two lovers can be true to each other if they don't know how to write. Christian Roebling is Washington Roebling's great-great-grandson and the great-great-great-grandson of John Roebling, who designed the bridge. It brings them to life for me <laughs> as people. It humanizes them. Historic missives and memories from a war that nearly tore this country apart from another time from the heart of Brooklyn. Scott Rappaport, CBS 2 News. Scott says the letters made their way to the Brooklyn Historical Society through various families and collections over the many years that have passed.